Welcome to a Fallout 76 episode. Today is March 5th, 2020, and a new Inside the Vault was released today. Here's all the news. In case you missed the Wastelanders preview panel at Bethesda Game Days last week, we've recapped many of the key details from the live show. We've also included the raw gameplay video that played during our Wastelanders discussion, finally, and have answered a few more community questions we didn't get to during the panel. Wastelanders takes place one year after the base game begins, and we wanted to make the world realistically feel like time has passed. Some details are small, like the fact that your Pip-Boy now reflects that the year is 2103, and some are huge, like NPCs, factions, and updated locations. The people who have flooded into Appalachia have been hard at work setting up their own settlements, safe havens for people like them, the two main locations are Foundation, the home of the Settlers, and Crater, the home of the Raiders. Both settlements act as hub locations where players can trade with NPCs and pick up quests. But Foundation and Crater aren't the only places you'll encounter other humans. In fact, NPCs are spread out across the map, including Lacey and Isella, who you'll meet right out of Vault 76. You'll encounter them both whether you're starting a new character or coming in as a seasoned vet. In fact, Bowden mentioned that players on any level can enjoy Wastelanders content. There's a new intro, so you can jump right in, straight out of the gate, but high-level characters can go back to Vault 76 and NPCs will respond to those players too. If you're super high-level, they might be a bit more intimidated by you than someone fresh out of the vault. That's very good to hear. As the gameplay walkthrough continued, we introduced Duchess, the proprietor of a bar called the Wayward, as well as the new Instances system. These areas are places that only you and your teammates will experience. Instances were a huge step for them because one of the things that allowed them to do is tell a tailored story to anyone that's entering it. Before, when you would go into these places, who knows what state it could have been in. People could have gone in and cleared out the entire dungeon. There could have been literally nothing left for you to do, and that's kind of a hit or miss experience. Also, you will not get an empty dungeon. You'll get an experience that's full of life and is tailored to you going in there. Also, there was no way we could really react to you. Your choices, your decisions, instances make it so we can cumulatively, step by step, keep track of what you've chosen so it can be reflected as you go along. This is super exciting technology, not only for Wastelanders, but for everything we're going to be doing in the future. It literally is a game changer and you should expect to see more. One of the biggest topics of conversation during the panel was, well, conversation. Dialogue trees have returned alongside NPCs, and this expands beyond what we've seen from them in the past. We get to go back to some of the strengths of Bethesda. These are conversations. We're trying to connect you with human beings and emotions. We're trying to give you a real impetus for why you were doing the things you're doing. We're not just limiting dialogue to four options. There are a number of different ways you can interact with NPCs based on your specials previous events you've taken part in, as well as the kind of character you want to role play. It took quite a bit of tweaking and balancing to create a new dialogue system that allowed for a lot of freedom, but wasn't overwhelming to the player. Thanks to the Wastelanders dialogue system, the team was able to go back to the base game and rewrite some of the original conversations you might have had to give you the option to respond. They say this is something they want to continue doing with the base game, going back through the campaign and adding new dialogue to, to continue to make things feel different. As you dig into Wastelanders, you'll encounter two different factions you can side with, the Settlers and the Raiders. Though you don't have to choose one or the other for most of the game, giving you the chance to experience both the Settlers story and the Raiders story. You can kind of go down both quest line to a point. You will eventually have to make a decision, but you can go far enough with both sides before that point that you get a sense of who these people are. 
Whoever you end up siding with, it's not like you can't be friends with the other side. We have a reputation system. It's just that side you will choose to help, you'll get a huge bump in your relationship with them. That being said, even if you side with the raiders in the new storyline, there is one raider faction that will remain hostile to you, the Blood Eagles. We spoke about this new enemy group while showing off Riding Shotgun, one of the new events in Wastelanders that has the player working with NPCs to escort some Brahmin through a series of tunnels under Foundation. I think they meant they were escorting through one of the Big Ben tunnels. One thing we're trying to do with these new events is give players more jobs. Obviously in this one your primary goal is to protect the Brahmin, but there are optional objectives where you can go find hidden supply caches and they'll be different every time you play through. If you find those supply caches you're going to get a much better reward at the end. In Wastelanders, there are even NPCs you can recruit and get to know better outside of the main story quests. These allies will come back to camp with you and give you quests, and of course, they are romanceable. There are two major allies and three lighter allies. The lighter allies will protect your camp and give you daily quests, but they aren't necessarily main characters, and you will have to track them down in the world rather than finding them in the hub locations. At the end of the panel, they shared a little bit about what's coming post Wastelanders, including completely reworking how regions of Appalachia and the leveling system function together in order to make the whole world viable for you at any level. Say goodbye to high level zones and low level zones. Enemies you will encounter will be at your level and at your friends levels so you can play together. And here are a couple of the questions that were received prior to the panel. Can we still launch nukes in Wastelanders? If so, what happens to settlements like Crater and Foundation? You can definitely still launch nukes in Wastelanders. This isn't the Raiders or Settlers' first rodeo either. They will jump into their own hazmat suits to protect themselves from radiation. Does the Wastelander storyline story override the story in the base game? No. We've worked to weave the new Wastelander story into what's already there in the base game. So they're not two separate games or places to join from, like, say, Nuclear Winter or Adventure Mode, Survival Mode. New characters will still be able to complete all base game content in addition to the new quests, and some of what you've accomplished in the base game story will have a role to play in Wastelanders. Is it strictly solo, or can you do team play? You can play through the new story content solo or as part of a team. If you're the team leader, your teammates can also choose to listen in as you have conversations with different NPCs during your quests. And they talk about balance changes. During an event last year, we had discussed a balance pass coming with Wastelanders, but since they have revised those plans, at Bethesda Game Days, they mentioned that we want to make all regions of Appalachia engaging for characters at all levels in the future, and that is what they plan to focus on during their balancing effort. How are you combating exploits and improving security? We take exploits and cheating seriously, and we're working to address cheating and close out exploits as often as possible. For example, earlier this year we implemented tech that enables us to address certain issues and exploits without needing to bring the game offline for maintenance, which allows us to be more agile than before. We also still have plans to roll out a multi-factor authentication, and we'll have more details as we are nearer to its release. And what are the plans for Fallout 76 after Wastelanders? During the panel, we mentioned we already have plans for future content through this year that we're excited about and we hope you will love too. We're focused on releasing Wastelanders right now and we'll look to share more details about additional 2020 Fallout 76 content in the near future. Wow, yeah, give these guys a bit of a break. We have less than four weeks till Wastelanders arrives. So, and then we will be flooded with hordes and hordes of content to keep us busy for a very long time. 
And here is a look at their new community calendar for the next few months. We've seen some requests from the community to have more insight into our plans for recurring events, and we put together a schedule so you can keep track of what's coming up next. So there will be a purveyor sale in March, a free, I can't see, consumables uh, in the atomic shop, uh, and let's see, not much else for March. Uh, obviously April 7th we have Wastelanders appearing some more purveyor things the next big thing everybody's looking for is the Foshnot which is now scheduled for 5th of sorry May 19th May 19th but what's interesting is just before that from May 15th through 18th is a new treasure hunter event so that sounds really kind of cool I'll leave a link to the full gameplay footage and I will see, I think it's about 20 minutes of footage without any voiceovers or anybody from the panel speaking over the footage. Uh, thanks so very much for watching, and we'll see you out in the world.